Check those out. Got some crazy kind of marbling effect going. All right, so this little pond is where I caught my first fish, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, that's my dad. Okay, yeah, so he can confirm. And now my son Landon, we're gonna try to get him on his very first fish. It's my Aunt Deborah's pond. It is loaded with big fat bluegill and some carp, some little tiny bass. And we have some night crawlers and a few little happy meals here. All right, my sister's little boy getting some action here. Look at the size of this brim. All right, you got him. Whoa, look at that. Look how big. Here, yeah, let's get a good. Let's get a good shot of it. Yeah. Well, so y'all can see what Landon's up to. He held the rod while I had a bluegill on, but then put it down before I could get the camera and then didn't show much other interest. But look, look at this. Look at this fat bluegill that I just caught. That'd be a really good color match for a bait right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And look at that eyeball. What do y'all think? Should I should I match this fish? I'll get a good color, a, a good picture. Here, wait, Landon, watch out. Man, y'all, look at this one I just caught. Look at the purples. That eyeball there. Beautiful fish. These old monster bluegills here. Landon, look. What do you think of that, buddy? Oh, it got you. All right, here, here, here. We're gonna let it go. Yeah, look at that. Look at those colors. Isn't that something, you guys? There we go. Check out the eyeball on that one. I'm gonna have Jetson do that one. That's sweet. Just good old fashioned wigglers. And I mean, this pond is tiny, as you can see. Nothing to it. Oh man, Jets and I mail call here. Look at these. These are really neat. I don't normally get exotic looking eyes, but look at those cuttlefish. All right, get cuttlefish? Cuttlefish, yeah. Get that. Super cool. And then uh, let's see, some more of my favorites. Oh yeah, these right here. Those are his crappy eyes, but they're not so crappy. And this is exciting. These are all of the 12 millimeter final versions for, for photos of the eyes that I'm doing with Jetson, the, the Signature Series collection. So we have all these things uh, over here. Yeah, some tarpon eyes. So here's, here's kind of a list. So here's just some of the names and SKU numbers of, of what we're doing. So there are examples of all of these right down here in these bags. So that's that's like our fire tiger stuff right there. Yeah, floral fire tiger. So anyway, I'm gonna be laying these out and then doing some imaging for the Jetson website. And uh, I'm excited. And then in the meantime, I have these really, really cool pours. I put a ton of different color layers in these. There's even white. You can see that white pearl in the center. Lots of greens and browns and blues and everything else. So I need to match an eye to that and I'm thinking I'm gonna go with the steel head. So anyway, lots of fun stuff to show you in this video. We're just working on several projects at once. And uh, this is one of those videos that's just gonna be filmed over a couple of days. And I'm just gonna show you whatever it is that we're doing. All right, everybody, hope y'all enjoyed that little blog there. Uh, Landon, um, kind of was into the fish but kind of not he didn't really know what to do whenever i handed him the pole he just kind of held it and let the fish yank on him a little bit so we will get there i promise uh, you know my sister's little boy is about 10 months older and uh there goes the laundry oh my god all right yeah unfortunately it's a sunday which means laundry day so gonna have to put up with that but uh anyway so all of those jets and eyes that we kind of took a look at earlier um, that I was, uh, you know, photographing and, uh, and just checking out in general, I decided it would be kind of fun to try to color match one of those. And, you know, oftentimes I'll pour swim bait patterns with the intention to try and complement one of the eyes that I have. But color matching an eye is a little bit different. So today we're going to try to color match this eye right here, and I'll show you a close-up of it. In fact, you may have seen it already in the video. 
I'm gonna try to hand pour this in the little action worm hand pour mold. So Angling AI Molds just released the 4.1 inch action worm, uh, both in injection mold and hand pour mold. I have the hand pour style. So I'm gonna see if I can duplicate this very complicated color pattern in this eyeball in a little worm mold 36 times over. Got our dental plastic swim bait blend ready, and uh, let's see what happens. All right, so now we're back on the table, and here's the mold right there. And uh, he actually engraved it for one action worm. So beautiful, beautiful finishing there. Excellent detail on this mold. I really like the uh, textured pattern that he put in the body. So it's a really attractive bait. And here's that eyeball. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Yeah, look at that. Lots of oranges and greens, yellows, chartreuses. And what I did, there goes that dang laundry again. God almighty. You know what, we're just gonna roll with it. I took a close up of it for the actual Jetson website. And so this kind of gives me a little bit easier time seeing what's happening because I'm not getting the natural glare from that hologram. Oops, that hologram backing. This allows me to like really see what's happening there. So anyway, um, I think what I'm going to have to do is throw it back to uh, the old drizzle method, as I call it, so that I can kind of get that randomly splotchy floral pattern that you see, you know, the eyes. Good Lord, the laundry. I hope y'all can't hear that, but I have a bad history with the laundry machine. So we're just going to start with, with this, and I'm just going to show you kind of a, a little rough version of it. Here's, here's how fun the, uh, the drizzle stuff is. I'm just gonna like dip my knife in some plastic and you can use whatever apparatus you want. And uh, it's real messy, it requires a lot of cleanup, especially in a multi-cavity open pour worm like this. But we're just gonna drizzle some black in our mold cavities there. We're just gonna kinda let it go everywhere a little bit and also in the tails. The point is to have sort of a random black splotchy look and then once we introduce heat okay it will actually melt away some of these little spider web looking effects and then you'll get that sort of blended look so for example you you can see here most of the black is in the middle right but there's little black splotches here a little bit of black splotching there some black splotching up here it's just kind of here there and everywhere okay so there's that mold cleaned up and what i mean by cleaned up is all of the little you know leftover pieces of black plastic that were in between the molds you know basically all of that's been cleaned up and uh, i'll show y'all how i do that whenever we uh, do the next part but essentially that's what we're going to start with just like the way that i pour some of my more higher end um, swim baits where i'm pouring layers i generally like to put the black down first that's just me and then layer my lighter colors below that so to speak this is the part that sucks is trying to get all this cleaned up so you can see oops you can see this edge here right i basically just want to run my thumb across it and it you know basically cleans that up and leaves the plastic in in that cavity right and then i have to do that in between the cavities so i'll like pinch those two together right and just try to get that get that to come off sometimes you like wind up taking little parts of it out of the mold but that's okay yeah this is the part where the drizzle method is is not so fun and, and it kind of depends on how much you want to drizzle it you know, this one I kind of went in all directions, which means I'm going to have more cleanup. If I had maybe gone a little bit more in a straight line and then maybe another angled line, you would have a lot less cleanup. But I wanted these to be very random, which basically means that I'm signing myself up for a lot of this right here. All right, so I got them cleaned up. And um, I like to kind of clean them up as I go. Really, you can just, let's say you're going to drizzle three colors. You can just go ahead and drizzle them and then only have to clean them up once. It's still the same process. I just like to clean them as I go. That way everything looks a little bit more 
orderly and that just kind of helps me get my thoughts together and it and it will allow me to actually see into the mold a little bit better without all that extra junk to where I can see, okay, here's where I want to place my next color. Whether I'm drizzling or actually hand pouring, it cleaning them as I go allows me to see little places where I might can, you know, fit the next color in, I guess is where I'm going with that. So now we're gonna try to get this uh, green and we're gonna build that color now and see if we can get close. All right, so it's a really beautiful shade of emerald green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some Lure Works, oops, emerald green, which is sort of a darker emerald green, but it also has like a lot of blue in it, I guess you could say. So we're just gonna kind of start there and then maybe brighten it up. We're gonna lighten it up. And I wanna do that with some of this Neo Lime here. And if you wanna try this color at home and you don't have Neo Lime, I think the Lure Works Flow Lime is pretty close. They look like Predator blood from the movie Predator. It also needs to be a little thicker, so we're gonna add some, some of that emerald back into it. Because whenever you do the drizzle stuff, you kinda need a lot of saturation. And I might even, um, might even add some pearl into this. Let me think. Okay, so what I did is I mixed in watermelon with it, okay? And that's sort of how I make what I call mean green. So if I look at that hue right there, and then I look at sort of the green hue, we are not that far off. I think it actually still might need to be a little bit brightened. So maybe we'll add like a couple drops of chartreuse. Heck, I don't know. Yeah. That's, you know, that that's what makes this so much fun is just trying to figure it out. Try to build color as you go and hopefully you put the right building blocks in the right places. So now I'm just gonna flip this mold over and just to kind of test, I'm just gonna test drizzle just to see if I think that I have enough saturation and if I think it's the right color. All right, I think I got it down and I added a little bit of our secret ingredient, some Dip Your Car ZTG Hyper Shift and that just gave it that beautiful little pearlized effect and now we're just going back on the drizzle. So this is gonna be some very, very uh, time consuming worms. But there again, let's just hit it up. Yeah. Oh yeah, let's get some of that drizzle going. So much fun. This is a fun little, little technique to play with. And there again, I don't wanna do too much of the green because I feel like, oops because I feel like there wasn't a ton of green, like, I don't know, I'm having, a, having trouble with words today, but I feel like it's more dominated by the orange and yellow. So the green is just kind of here and there. So I don't, want, I don't want it to be overwhelming, but I want it to be visible, it's very important. It's a beautiful, beautiful shade of green as well. So let's kind of, yeah, I'll tell you, my thumb's gonna be sore after doing all this. Yeah, isn't that cool? All right, we got one done. So there's how much green is actually in it. So you can see it's not as much. By contrast, if you look at that, you think, oh man, there's a lot of green in that. Once you clean it up, you can see it's actually not so much green. Either way, I think it's gonna look killer. I'm loving the way that this green and black looks together so far. Yeah, note to self, never do this again. Man, what a time consuming mess. However, they're looking pretty cool. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I think I'm going to now pour the orange. You can see those orange hues in there. But instead of drizzling them all over the place, I think I'm gonna kinda pour them across, sort of like I would if I was pouring um, like a, a actual more controlled pattern. And then once I kinda do that, and it just kinda fills in randomly between the drizzles, 
all that space that's not covered in orange, I'm then going to fill in using sort of that golden, eh, using sort of that golden chartreuse hue. That's what we're actually going to like pour the body with and hope for the best. And of course, we are using Dead On Plastics Plastisol. They are one of the title sponsors of my channel. And uh, so big thanks to them and shout out to an amazing product. This right here is the Black Bucket Swim Bait Blend, which is normally a little bit firm for a worm. However, in these 4.1 action worms, I find that this blend actually feels really good. Um, now, normally if you're making these for the purposes of drop shotting, you know, using the floating plastic would definitely, I think, be beneficial. However, I don't actually have a lot of the floating plastic, and um, this is just what I wanted to use. I'm very comfortable pouring the black bucket stuff. Um, but anyway, we are going to build the uh, orange here, and I don't think it's going to be any more complicated other than adding some orange. So in addition to uh, what I think is the best plastisol on the market, Dead On Plastics also makes really great colors. So this is the Dead On Plastics orange color there. And it seems to be just a pretty straightforward orange. However, I still might pearlize it because I really, really liked the pearl effect that I've got in that green. So this is at least what we're gonna start with. Now I don't have any like orange pearl. Um, so I may have to add, you know what? Let me see what I might could add to this to give it a pearlized effect. All right, I actually found a little bit of red pearl. So this won't alter the color too bad, I don't think, but it will give us a nice little pearlized effect just to kind of go along with it. Yeah, we're gonna need more. You can barely even see that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just a little bit. And some of these pearl effects are really only visible in person, unfortunately. It's hard to get all of this on camera. All right, now I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with this orange without ruining everything that we've done. If I just kinda pour it across, even though I'm pouring it maybe a little bit more in line, because of how random this is, it will actually fill in sort of randomly, if that makes sense. So, I think we can get away with that. We're just gonna try it, you know? Just just kind of pour across, you know? Just just completely sort of random. Yeah, something like that. And then the uh, gold, so like there's the orange, oops. And then that sort of golden chartreuse hues will basically fill in everything else so and that goes for like even the sides there you know so like even if there's a bunch of color down in the in the in the front of the bait or or what's going to be the top of the bait you've also got all this op open space on these edges here where color can fill it in all right now i get to clean this up but it will actually be a lot less work and then we're just going to fill it in. We're going to build that kind of real bright chartreuse kind of golden color. And hopefully these don't look horrible because this is a lot of work. It's a lot of fun. You know, it's, it's, it's a relatively, um, you know, easy thing to do. It's just a lot of cleanup. And yeah, just got to hope that it works out. That's just all the little orange pieces that I took off of this. <laughs> wow. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Lots of little steps here. Definitely cannot be impatient. All right, so this I want it to be yellow base. And so we're gonna start, we're gonna start with yellow and then sort of add maybe some chartreuse to it because I feel like there's some chartreuse in this color somewhere because it's fire tiger. Where's my knife? Here it is. All right, let's just kind of get that going. Oh yeah. And then we're gonna add some gold pearl to it in the form of the dead on, oops, dead on Yukon. It's one of their pearlized paragon effects. And it, and it will add some uh, gold pearl, pearl effect to it, yeah. 
Looking good there. Maybe even a little bit more. Right on, right on. So if I look at my example here on the phone, let me find it. You now there's lots of um, lot, lots of yellow and gold golds in there, and there might be a few shades of red. I didn't really add red. I'm hoping that the orange, where it's going to blend in with that black, will darken it to where it appears more red. That's at least my story, and I'm sticking to it. All right, let's see if we can pour one of these clean. Whenever you already have that much stuff in the mold, it can be difficult to pour it uh, to pour it clean without overfilling. It just depends on how much is in it. And because this is so random, each cavity is different. All right, and on to the next one. I actually had to uh, clean one of those up. I had overfilled it just a little bit. So I just want to take my time, try to do it right the first time. Because this is, uh, you hate to, you hate to ruin it here at the very end. And I already love the way that these colors are playing together. If you just kind of look at that, it's sort of marbly and random. Looking, looking like these are going to be pretty fun once they come out of the mold. Fun worms to look at. And just like that, it looks like there's 30 different colors in there when really it's just four colors. It's just the orange, the green, the black, and then that kind of golden chartreuse. So what I want to do now is I want to put these on the hot plate, okay, which the hot plate is already on. And basically we're just going to cook it. We're just going to melt these layers together, let these, let these molds get so hot that it actually kind of makes the plastic workable again, okay. And that should make them even more marbled it can kind of melt away some of the little spider web effect from the drizzle and hopefully that will make a really really cool pattern so basically we're just going to bake them for a little bit and um, it's really hard to kind of tell when you've um, gotten them hot enough it's 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 kind of just hit or miss so you just have to watch it and just say oh, okay it looks like it's melted enough or maybe it needs to sit there a little bit longer on the hot plate you know, there again, it's just completely timing, but uh, hopefully these do well. Yeah, check those out. Got some crazy kind of marbling effect going. And uh, man, what a challenge. Let's get them out. All right, here we go. Drum roll, please. Let's see how we did. We're just gonna take them out. Oops, let me, um, yeah, we're just gonna take them out, flip them over. Oh man, look at that. See, like, the randomness of it? That's kind of what that, uh, and of course, somebody's now. Some kid just rode a three wheeler through my front yard. I'm gonna go spank that little boy. All right, yeah. We're just going to kind of take them out real fast and then turn them over. Oh, I like that one. That one got more green and black in it, I feel like. And that's what's so fun about doing this, this technique. And no two are like the same. So out of all 36 worms, if you were to like examine them closely, not, no worm is going to be like exactly like the other ones. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Now, the question is, do they resemble anything like the color profile of those? Oops. Yeah, so let's get a good look at those. Just lots of colors, just married in there real nice. And then, yeah, sort of, kind of. I think if I did it again, I would try to get more of that chartreuse yellow. I think I poured a little bit too much orange, and I think I think I want to see less orange and more of that chartreuse yellow. Oh heck yeah, y'all! Look at this just labyrinth of color, 
and I put the eyes right down front. Let's see if we can get them in focus better. Yeah, so I think that right there is gonna be thumbnail. And you can kind of see that they do resemble uh, the, the color profile. So I, th I think the worms actually look really cool by themselves. But I actually do think they are a pretty good match for, for, those, for those eyes right there. I think when you just zoom out and look at them as a whole, I think you can tell, yeah, those, those definitely fit in with the uh, overall color profile and that's the goal. Yeah, that was pretty fun. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Took a long time. You know, really before when, it, when I've done that kind of drizzly stuff, I've done it in a swim bait where you have a little bit more room and there's a lot less cleanup. You know, you're not just picking out all those little parts. Um, so that right there was actually, I would say, a much bigger challenge than if I was to do the exact same thing with the exact same colors in my larger swim bait molds just from that um, cleaning up standpoint alone but um, super cool probably won't see me do those worms again because that took a while but uh, a really awesome effect and a fun idea so you know i was looking at those eyes like i said and i started thinking maybe i can do something with these that's not a swim bait and i said oh i need i need to use those new action worm molds I haven't featured them in a video yet, and I just got them about two weeks ago, or, or may maybe a week ago. And uh, it's brand new to Angling AI, by the way. And I said, well, let me see what I can do with those. And here we are. So, hope y'all enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Hit the notification bell. And thanks so much for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one.